These words are from my heart. These words are not made up. I will live for you. And I am devoted to you. King of majesty, I have one desire just to be with you, my Lord. Just to be with you, my God. Jesus, you are the Savior of my soul. He wasn't surprised when he was called to give a ride to a person going to the capital city. But he was surprised at the wonderful greeting that he was given by the crowds. People were laying down palm branches for him. And their coats, laying them right on the ground. Wow. He thought, I am really something special. People are really appreciating all that I am doing. Wow. But the truth was, the celebration was not for him, and it wasn't about him. It had nothing to do with him, because he was carrying Jesus. He was simply carrying the message. You see, as a church, it's not about us. Just like it's not about the donkey. It's about Jesus. <coughs> we are carriers of the gospel. We are carriers of the message. So our job is to keep taking Jesus places. You know, I remember when somebody carried the gospel message to me. Now, let me give you just a little bit of history about myself. I went to church all of my life. Before I came to this country, I got an award for perfect attendance at the church that I attended in England. Then we moved over to this country. I was in church all the time. I loved to go to church. But it wasn't until I was a young teenager that somebody actually carried the gospel message to me. And I'm thankful for that. Because I still might be a churchgoer today and not know anything about the salvation of Jesus. You know, when you heard about the gospel of Jesus, somebody carried it to you. And that's what we need to do now. We need to be carriers of the gospel. We need to choose to spread the gospel. We need to choose to go. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. Because of President Kennedy's vision and determination, man's footprint was forever placed on the moon, and our nation was led into an era of unprecedented growth and global leadership. The Assemblies of God Bible Alliance is dedicated to leaving a footprint not on the moon, but in the hearts and lives of millions of people worldwide. We have been doing that throughout our history as an alliance of people dedicated to sharing God's word. We're number one. We could rest, but we dare not. Not with the eternity of millions, perhaps billions at stake. For this year's theme, we're borrowing the words of President Kennedy. We choose to go to the tribes, to the unreached peoples, and to the scattered multitudes who still need Jesus. We choose to go. Will you go with us? That's our assignment. To go. That's what the scripture tells us. To go into all the world. So what is our goal? Our goal is effectiveness. Our goal is reaching people. Our goal is faithfulness. Our goal is to go. I am going to show you this morning excerpts from the mission service that we had at General Council last month uh, in Orlando, Florida. 
Uh, I, I was telling uh, somebody that I have the head of the missions department from the Assemblies of God coming to the church. The only problem is he didn't know he was going to be here. So this morning, I'm not going to show you the whole message, but uh, Greg Mundus, head of World Missions Department, is the speaker at the um, missions service at General Council, and I would like to show you an excerpt. I heard about a youth pastor that uh, researched the word go. He looked into the Hebrew, into ancient Semitic languages, into the Greek. He did an etymological study, did the syntax, tore it apart up and down. And he came to the conclusion that go means go. And that's what we're asking tonight. We're asking God to get into us and get that goer going. On behalf of our past generation of missionaries and our present generation of missionaries and our missionary leaders, I thank you, our AG constituency, for your faithfulness over this past 99 years in supporting in praying and believing that we can take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Your investment in world missions, your children, your parents, your funds, your prayers, and the leading and the empowering of the Holy Spirit has resulted in what we see today that our church around the world, 66 million believers, 362,000 churches scattered over 252 countries, territories, and provinces of our world. To God be the glory. Amen. And in your bulletin this morning is a sheet with the statistics of what we are doing around the world that uh, is there for your pleasure. Our goal is to depopulate hell. We want to see less people there. We must relentlessly reach out to people with the life-changing message of Jesus. You see, before Jesus left this world, he gave the disciples a commission that is global in nature. He entrusted them with a mission to evangelize the whole world. And this commission that was given to them is meant for us as well. A commission that has been taken very seriously by the Assemblies of God. The narrative of sharing the gospel with every people and tribe is not new for the Assemblies of God. Our forefathers who pioneered our movement and set the course under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit resolved in 1921 to seek out the neglected regions. Our present day emphasis on partnerships, the suffering church, and unreached peoples is really built on the vision, the passion, the purpose, and the strategy of our forefathers, but it is married to the leading of the spirit and present day realities. Our early church assemblies of God fathers believed, and I believe that they would be cheering us on tonight as we continue to reach out to those with no or little access to the gospel. The work of missions isn't easy. And you know, no one can do it under their own power. It takes the power of God for anyone to survive in any missionary venture. And you've experienced it. When you go to your workplace or your neighborhood or even to your family and you spread the gospel, you are doing the work of missions. And you know that it can be frustrating. You can feel powerless. You can feel doubtful. And you see, that's where the power of God provides comfort and stability 
and knowledge for us. You see, the power that is given for this mission to reach your world and to reach the world is an absolute divine power. Jesus said that all authority was given to him. The power of the Lord Jesus is universal. Jesus is omnipotent. You know, sometimes we think Satan is omnipotent. He's not. But Jesus is. Hallelujah. And all, it's the power of Jesus that we need to do missions in this sin-tainted and demon-infested world. Having assurance, his disciples, of this power for the task ahead, he gave them the mandate, what we are supposed to be doing too, to spread the gospel of Jesus. It will demand our advocacy for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God was making his appeal through us. It will demand our advocacy for workers. Matthew 9, 35 through 38 says this, Jesus went through all the towns and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every manner of disease and sickness among them because he had compassion on them. Why? Because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were harassed and helpless. Then he said something very powerful. He prayed a prayer that every one of us can pray. Here's what he said to his disciples. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Pray for workers. Let me put this into perspective for a moment, just so we can see the big picture. Let's say there is an airfield that is full of airplanes. They're just sitting there. Oh, there's plenty of people around. I mean, there's people that work behind the scenes. There's, there's those who fuel the airplanes, and there are the mechanics that take care of the airplanes, and there's the air traffic controllers that direct the airplanes. There's the taxis that taxi them out to the runway. And there's a whole lot of other people there, too. The problem is there are no pilots. How can the plane complete its mission if there is no one to fly it? Jesus gave the disciples a mandate to move out of their immediate domains to do missions. He said, therefore, go. Or to translate it from the Greek, uh, one would translate it, therefore, as you are going, or since you are going. We have the mandate to reach the mission field around us, and we need to take that uh, mandate seriously, but this morning I'm talking about world missions. I'm talking about the mandate around the globe. And we are the ones who are behind the scenes. We are the ones who will support the pilot or the missionary that is going to complete the, uh, the mission. We are the ones who need to pray that God sends the workers. Just like we need workers in the local church, we need workers in the harvest field around the world. We need to stand in the gap in prayer, praying for the workers. We in our support role, you know, I, I should just call everybody up here and anoint everybody here with oil and commission you to the mission field. What are you talking about? I'm not called to go across the seas. I'm not either. But I'm still part of the team. I should be commissioned to be in a support role for those that God has called to go to countries and cultures and areas that are difficult to work in. 
We are all part of the missions team. And the missionary is the one who is on the forefront. Missions means sending. A missionary is one sent with the message to preach the good news to the lost. Jesus said to his disciples, go into all the world. He told them to do three things when they go into all the world. He says, first of all, you're to make disciples. And I like this. He doesn't say, get one here and make a disciple and get one here and make a disciple and get one there. No. He says, I want you to make disciples of all nations. I want to tell you something. Jesus had a global view here. He worked with the individual, and he cares for the individual. And we prayed this morning, thanking God that he takes care of us individually. But the commission is to go to the world, to the nations, to make fully devoted followers of Christ of all tribes, people groups, nations, radical groups, all. (coughs) Do you know as of today, right now, there are... 22,000 people groups in the world. The second thing he said was, we are commissioned to incorporate new converts to the kingdom of heaven. Now, how do we count them? Well, he told us how to count them. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. So when someone receives Christ, they make a public testimony and say, hey, dunk me in the water because this is what Jesus did for me and I'm going to symbolize it by being baptized. And the third thing he said was, help them mature as believers, teaching them. He's basically saying, the things that I have taught you The knowledge that I have imparted to you, I now want you to depart and impart into them. So how does a missionary complete this commission in different cultures, different areas around the world? Listen to what Greg Mundus has to say for those of us who are behind the scenes. We are now calling on you for a second offering. No, you don't have to reach into your pocket. We're not asking you for money. We want more than that. We are asking for your advocacy in intercession. On your seat, when you came in, there was this envelope. Would you pull it out? Maybe it's at the feet where you're sitting, or maybe you tucked it in your purse, or put it in your coat, please take this in your hand and open it up. You will find six prayer cards describing the needs for breakthroughs in our six regions of the world. We humbly ask you to choose one of those regions on a breakthrough card under the guidance of the Spirit and become a prayer advocate for a breakthrough. Okay, a couple of weeks or so ago, I handed out these cards to you, the envelope. If you weren't here and didn't get a set, I have these that are left over. Uh, You're welcome to get one. But we need to be intercessors for these folks that are on the mission field. Today, we're asking you to pray for the needs. When I gave these out Uh, A couple weeks ago, I asked you to choose the region in which your heritage came from and pray for that region. Now we're asking you to take a card, pray for it. If there's other prayer warriors in your family or your workplace or whatever, you want to share these with someone else, hand them out and say, pray for this region if you would. Or you might want to take one and pray for one on Monday and pray for one on Tuesday and Wednesday and so on, or however you want to do it. But pray for the regions. We cannot be effective around the world without the effectual, fervent prayer 
of a righteous man or a righteous woman. We need to support this in prayer. So I have these. Uh, if you'd like to get one before you leave, you're welcome to, to, to do that. Okay, now I want to play the, uh, the final words that we're going to show you this morning of Brother Mundus. We are now asking you for a third offering. You may say, Mundus, how dare you ask for anything else? See, it's not really me asking. It's the Lord Jesus who is calling us to give. The offering of ourselves. See, there's lost people within our reach. There are those with no or little access to the gospel. There are anonymous groups in difficult geographical, religious, and political places who are unreached. You hold in your hand examples of that. They may be unreached, but they are not unreachable. I believe, I believe somebody needs to offer himself or herself and go. I believe that God is calling out to us this evening. Are we this evening in a position of brokenness and surrender to say to the Lord, I am willing to be an intercessor advocate for unreached peoples and gospel workers. I am willing to go to an anonymous people, unknown people clothed in anonymity to share the gospel. I am willing to be empowered by the Spirit to pay any price and to do battle with the adversaries so all can hear. You have offered your money. Thank you. You are offering your time and becoming advocates through intercession. Now I challenge you from all around this building to make an offering of yourself. Are you ready to make an offering of yourself? Let's look at the promise that the Lord gave us. He said, I am with you always. What exactly is he saying? First, the promise was a confirmed assurance that we need for missions. For local missions as we reach out into our world with the gospel. For global missions as we intercede for missionaries. And in a few moments as we trust God for a faith promise that we can support our missions financially that we are sending to the field. Secondly, the promise conveys a constant and continued presence of Jesus with his people. He said, I am with you always. You're never alone. Thirdly, this promise, uh, presence was promised as a timeless one. He said, his presence would be with us till the end of the age. The word translated age denotes an indefinitely long period of time. God is still carrying every one of us into missions or calling every one of us into missions. The field is ripe under harvest, we're told. The laborers are few. Would you answer God's call to missions today? Our missions is global. Our mandate is is urgent because many people are dying in their sins daily. Now, 
Some here might say, man, God's calling me to go to wherever. But others, you're saying, God, I want to be a part of this. How can I be a part of it? And we've just told you this morning, prayer, giving. Before we receive our faith promises, I'm going to hand those out right after this. Um, I want to share this wonderful testimony with you about a pastor who went to the country of Tibet. My first trip to Tibet was memorable. 99.5% of Tibetans have never heard the story of Jesus. There are only two small churches in the country and one of them is shut down. We drove through a mountain pass at 13,000 feet and when we came through that mountain pass, we emerged on the other side to find a beautiful valley spread below us. There were tiny huts made of sticks and, and logs. We saw herders with their yaks and this nomadic tribe. We wound our way down to that valley and where we met an elderly woman. We set up a small solar panel, connected a box to it with a light switch on it, and then we handed her a light bulb, a big light bulb. She had never seen a light bulb in her life. She was trying to figure out what it was. When we were ready, we literally had to teach her how to turn the switch on. I never thought you had to teach somebody how to turn on a light switch. I mean, up is on, down is off. But she flipped that switch and all of a sudden, for the first time in her life, she saw light. I will never forget the sound as her laughter filled that valley. We then went over to her little hut and one of the guys climbed up on the roof. He set up the solar panel on the roof. We ran the wire down through the sticks and we set up the receiver and the light bulb in her hut. And again, she flicked that light switch on and for the first time, light filled her tiny shack. That night, everyone from miles around were there, all crowded into her little hut where they saw light for the first time. We were so excited for her, but it made me stop and think. If she's that excited about physical light, if the whole community is that excited about physical light, what will it be like when for the first time she encounters spiritual light? We took her light now we've got to take her the light. And when we take her the light, what an amazing celebration of light there will be in Tibet. Isn't that a wonderful testimony? We have to be behind the scenes support to send the light of the gospel into areas that are experiencing spiritual darkness. God knows you. He knows what you're thinking, what you just thought, and what you're about to think. He knows everything there is to know about you. He created you. He knit you together. You are exactly what He wanted you to be. And when the world tells you that you don't matter, that you aren't smart enough, that you aren't pretty enough or strong enough, just remember who created you. And when you feel like you've really messed up and nothing seems to make sense anymore, remember that the God that created the whole entire universe created you too. And you are exactly the person he wanted you to be.